Hi everyone, this is another session where we continue our research and discussions around uh, potential upgrades to the standard. Uh, the point of this series, just so people understand, is that you know I, I bring in together a, a group of really intelligent seasoned engineers and we try to find uh, better ways to do the things that we already do today. And, you know, if these sessions are anything, it's just a an embodiment or a, a, a materialization of the concept of the concept of continuous evolution. Right. We're continuously evolving the standard. We're trying to find better ways to do the same things that we already are doing today. Why do we bother doing that, Krista? What do you think? Why, why should we do that? Can we just keep doing what we're doing and be happy? Is that is there a problem with that? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> no, I think it's nice to improve and. Um better the stuff that you work on um i think you should evolve super important uh, right because yeah. the, the industry itself is evolving we know there are like just sort of the people watching us you know the standard like i always say it's not perfect it's always in draft mode right and it's in draft mode because of the state of the industry right there is no such a thing as oh well i learned this thing it's never going to change that's not that's not how things are the way we were writing things a month ago is different than the way we were writing things like six months ago and so on and so forth. There's a bunch of pieces of code everywhere, like for people that want to see how things evolved. You know, we're trying to catch up on some of our projects, but you know, if you look at some of the projects that we uh, have in the past, like something like Triple S, for instance, we're still trying to kind of keep up with some of these changes, but um, uh, the because we're going really fast. You know, we try as much as we can to kind of upgrade all these projects, but you will still run into situations where, you know, exceptions or, or validations are still being handled the old way. Like there's a new way, an old way. You know, you'll see some instances here and there. I, I bet somewhere maybe in exams. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah, I guess we upgraded all of them. That's good. That's great. But anyway, there are instances where, you know, things are not... Um, as straightforward or or as uh, up to speed with the standard uh, as we expect them to be, and that's natural because we're gonna try different things. Um, uh, uh, you know, we're gonna try different things. We're gonna try them across multiple projects, and then if they work, we're gonna adapt them, right, Chris? So that's that's how we play, right? You know, try it on a big application. You know, if it works, great. If it doesn't, then you know that's okay. We'll you know we'll we'll roll back or revert. There's no problem with going and saying, hey, we we made a mistake. Let's go back and, and do this. Okay, just to, to bring the focus back on this discussion, we are trying to find a better way to represent certain other certain aspects of a particular uh, service or a function. So just to kind of, if, if someone by any chance is just seeing this for the first time, if you look at look at the uh, the concepts and the ideas and the principles you'll find that there is a an idea here around making sure that every service has multiple facets multiple modules so this is how we see a service a service is basically this object and it has these different aspects of it and these aspects is what we represent through partial partial class um let's Let's switch over to Cresto and see. He's been experimenting with this as usual, trying to push the standard a little bit further. And we are also joined by Mr. Wardy. What up, Paul? Hi. Hey. Sorry, you caught me having some lunch. Uh, lunch. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, so Cresto, what do you have? Um, so, to follow up on on, on <clears throat> the session we had on Saturday. I explored. Um, having a, a strongly typed class um, operation that we can use um, to define what we want for, for this try catch um, that, that we want to do. Mm -hmm. um, if I go into that, um, it's just the normal function that we pass in. So that delegate that we've, we've always had is there. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, a list that represents the roles, um, a, a list of types to, to define what uh, we want to do a retries on mm -hmm. um, the same for rollback and uh, dynamic for, for tracing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
which which will allow us to to, to set this up. Um, I tried looking at um, taking this into an external component um, yeah. or in extension methods, but in the end, I, I stopped that completely. I thought yeah. it, it's better to stay with this because we are in the app domain and we don't want to bring an external dependency in here. So I, yeah. I, I didn't explore that any further. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what, what the try catch then looks like is um, I've just chained that um, function calls then. So the first one is tracing. So nothing new in terms of the syntax. Mm -hmm. um, we do that. Um, and then if, if I just minimize this quickly, we can see that uh, we pass in that operation yeah. so that the, the tracing can get um, what, is, what is needed from that from this um, operation yeah see if you, if you need tracing so it, it makes this a little bit ugly because we we have that um returns and stuff now as, as a result of passing in the extra um, properties to it yeah um with, with, with rollbacks is, is exactly the same so we pass uh the the, the list of um rollback conditions in there yeah um and then I've got um, retry is exactly the same. Um, and then security. Yeah, and then uh, uh, on, on this the security one uh, is, is basically just a method call that can evaluate your security. So again, I think there's, there's two parts to this. So we can do a normal uh, check here to see if, if it um, satisfy all the role conditions. But mm -hmm. if we want to go further, uh, I think this can still sit on the, under the normal validation if we want to do entity specific things to see um, if, if 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 somebody is allowed to change something. Right. So, say for instance, if if we look at a a, a post on Tarafu, only the person that posted the post is allowed to edit it. Yeah. Um, if there's something else, then you can do that model um, specific type validation. So this wouldn't wouldn't go in there. That will still go under the normal validation. That's right. So if, I, so if I show that quickly, then it'll be just a, a, a extra rule in here, similar to how we would compare if the created user and updated users is, is satisfying the conditions for that. Right. So, so, so okay. So, okay. Just just from from a high level perspective, I want to get rid of this execution with tracing being verbose like that in that object somehow right so an idea that i'm thinking about crystal let me see if i can pull your repository this is this is on the master branch right or is this yeah yeah standard okay perfect thank you so let me go and open this in visual studio and here is here's something i have in mind by the way just to, just something on the side that's completely unrelated uh, if you try to pull roslyn and try to build it on your local machine and run the tests, you will not be able to touch your tests, you touch your computer until it's done because <laughs> because the uh, it runs UI tests for Visual Studio and it keeps popping up instances of Visual Studio and closing them. And every time you try to do something, it just kind of <laughs> kind of tosses you off. So I thought that was hilarious. Um, but but anyway, uh, Here's here's something that comes to mind. Just something for you to kind of just to see what you have to say about it. Um, I have OData Neo open. I could just you know just represent the idea, and then we could talk about. Let's see here. So check this out. Um, what happens? What do you think about? So imagine that you have this O query service. Well, let me get from main actually, because this is not the latest. So, so Christo, imagine, okay, we still have the idea of the object and all that. That might be okay, but then I still don't want to see like execute on and all these things, right? I want maybe uh, parameters or something. So what if this try catch itself had something like if I go up in here what if I do this what if I go here and say this is my function 
but I also have, let's say, you know, a boolean or let's say a list of exceptions that says retry on like this. Just, just, just experimenting, you know, just trying to see what, because I'm trying to get rid of the, so now if this is your function, let me put all of these things in a, in one kind of extract. Uh, what is that project? It's something like that. No, take this out. There you go. Okay. Already defines a member called O. Okay. So imagine this. I want to be able to go and say, you know, can I do in here? So it's a pretty much the same idea, but instead of having to explicitly talk about a particular object, you can now go and say, I can do here with or retry on, and then provide my list of exceptions. Of course, this will be like this list itself will be just a function that's in the in the partial class. So this will be like I don't know new projected token uh, validation exception or something like that. Right? I'll just probably say exception. Probably be better to pass down a list of types, wouldn't it? Huh? Probably be better to pass down a list of types rather than. A list so, of I mean, it, yeah, exception types. I yeah, yeah, to sure. Exceptions. I mean, ideally, I want this to be something like this. I want to say, okay, here is your list of exceptions. And then uh, retry on exceptions. This is what I was talking about earlier in terms of I want to be able to kind of leave a reference but not be too verbose about what's actually happening in here. Yeah. Right? So now I'm thinking, let's see here. So so watch this. So now we get that kind of, let's just, let's abuse it a little bit. Let's go and just make it a little bit worse just to see what happens, right? So I have this guy here. And then we can say the reference to tracing. What's the object that you're, is it just a dynamic object that you're passing for tracing? For tracing, yes, yeah. Okay. Right, so something like this. So let's go back to here. And then I'm basically saying tracing. I have here uh, tracing with tracing or something like that. Base, base on add, or something like that, and then I'm basically just going and saying, "Here is trace on add, like this, right?" Um, why is this guy tripping? You cannot use lambda expression as an argument to a dynamically dispatch operation without first casting it to a ah, stupid. We could we could fix that problem. That's not. I'll just for now. I'll just say it's a string, just for now. But we can fix this. Like ideally, I want to actually not even pass the function, but a reference to that function, because it's gonna look prettier this way. Like I I want to go and say no. Actually, I don't want you to pass. But we're getting closer. Like we're getting super close because this here is not too shabby. It's not too bad at all. Right, because you're basically just adding modules to your existing function, right? But yeah. go ahead, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, no, no, that looks nice. Um, but I don't think we're going to get away with the um chain chain function calls inside the try catch. I, th I think we're still going to have trouble there with the returns because of the return. So th that's why I was thinking, like. If I'm passing in a reference instead of the actual function, so what I'm passing here is actually a func that returns a list of exceptions. You know what I mean? So this is my retry on handler, right? So now I can take that retry on 
and I can go here and say retry on and then encapsulate this guy. Right? So now you have this idea of, oh, wait, I don't want the function. I just want to pass the, f so it even looks prettier while you're still taking the whole thing. And now you don't have to do ret return, return, return. It's just a simple, I don't know where this is coming from. I didn't think about this before I, I started talking to you, but it just you just start an idea with people and kind of rolls out yeah. like, a, like a bowl of snow, you know, and it gets bigger and better. So, so let's do, so the same thing here, we can basically go here and say, you know, uh, this is a funk that returns a dynamic object, right? And then we can go here and say, here is my retry on add. Right. The one thing I'm really, you know, it's OK. This is OK to a certain extent. However, I just feel that there's something missing. I can't put words on it. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. the problem. Like, let me just kind of this is just this is mostly just about the aesthetics of just uh, like just how things look like. I just feel that. Okay, let me just push all that garbage away. I just want to see. I don't think that looks too bad, though. It doesn't, right? I just... Uh... This doesn't look too bad, does it? It's all right, right? <laughs> So, so we did at least the requirements that we had in mind. We left a reference to every aspect. That's one. But we also, at the same time, we kind of honored our existing structure. So it's not a big jump from where we are today to the next level. Yeah. Right? It's just something about the architecture of the code itself. It's, it's a little disturbing. I just don't know. I think that I think that might be okay. Did we actually find a solution for it? Because by the way, like behind the scenes, we're gonna have to work really hard to kind of see how these are gonna fit in 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 a way that covers all different kind of aspects of this. But this is great because So how you started with this was you had the lambdas stacked, didn't you? You had lambdas inside lambdas. Mm-hmm. Um, in the week, I, uh, I'll show you what I came up with because I basically... Why are you quiet and sad today? What happened to you? Am I quiet? Am I? Yeah, something is up with you. What happened? Did, did your currency drop any further? <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. They're almost worth a cent now. Almost. We're on our way back up. <laughs> Okay, um, show your screen. I've posted a, a code sample in Discord. Oh, you, you posted in Discord? Okay. Yeah. You're going to make me share Discord. Okay. Well, you don't have to. We can do it from a visual studio. I, the thing is, I don't have it in a project anymore. Is that it, Paul? Okay. Like, yeah. That's it, okay. yeah. So I came up with this idea of a surface service operation of type T, which is essentially what Christo was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look, each of the... The methods when called they just wrap the um the action that's given at the top with extra stuff right Hold on. I'm, I'm trying to because this is extremely small for people on phones so give me one second paul just one time yeah, no worries. let me slap this in a gist there was a lot of stuff that was wrapped up in this yep, i think yep. me and christo talked about it in the week but I think it was we were talking about it at a time where like it was like middle of the night for you so yeah you know I, i'm i'm still up until like two 
two in the morning. I was talking to ATN yesterday up until really late. Uh, so that's okay. Just ping me. Even if it shows that I'm away, I'm not really away. I'm probably watching something or reading something. But anyway, it's okay. Show me what you have. So you have this with retry. So and you have this object. Go ahead. Go so ahead. yeah, all of the methods are basically the same thing. But if you if you look on line 22 there, it's basically saying um, that's that's the original action, right? And if we if you look at what that logic is doing, is it's applying a re re the retry logic to the action. So if we scroll up to the top, when we in our constructor here we pass in the action that we want to perform. So this is our business operation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all I've done is I've kind of implemented this, this wrapper concept that you were originally playing with. Yeah. Um, when you actually consume it, you end up with something that looks a bit like this. Another message in Discord. <laughs> Son of a, okay, fine. Uh, good like that, yeah. <laughs> but I've wrapped up a lot of stuff in here, including some bits that I thought were potentially a bit like that unit of work, weirdly enough, that I thought might raise some more questions. Okay, you know, I don't know anybody on the planet at this moment that's discussing this, so we may as well, right? Yeah. And trust me, like I, like I got my ears in so many different places. I Nobody's... Nobody even cares, dude. Like, you know, people are talking about, you know, oh, there is this new pattern and, you know, oh, we need to, what is it? The CQRS and all that. And, but guys, the code still looks garbage. Like, well, nobody cares. Like, we need to make the code look like, look like something that I want to look at in the morning. Like, imagine Monday morning, you're starting to work and you see something that's terrible, right? And that just ruins your day. Okay. So, so the, the concept here was that um, I have, I've got this fictitious add invoice operation in, mm -hmm. in one of my, well, this is an example of an orchestration. Mm -hmm. um, so what you can see is it, it validates the invoice um, and then it does an auth check on an auth broker and then it mm -hmm. makes the processing call and then it adds something to um, a, a unit of work, essentially a rollback operation. So if yeah. this fails later, then right. we've got that unit of work in the external scope. Right. Um, and then we raise our event to say we're done so any future things can do their processing return. So that's our actual code. Now, right. um, what you can see I've done on line two here is I've declared a new service operation of type invoice, which is the yep. previous code sample I gave you. Yep. And all I'm doing is I'm You're saying, hey, the action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, here's, here's my action. This is what I'm going to do. And then when I do um, from line 19 onwards, dot with retry, dot with rollback, I mean, the implementations of these can be however we want them to happen, essentially. We can model them out differently. Um, with the last line being dot execute. This one is the one that I have a little bit of issue with, but I know why you're doing it. I know exactly why you're doing it this way. Yeah, I mean, this is much like calling, you know, dot two array on a link query, right? You're yeah. basically saying, hey, I'm done composing now, because this is this is basically the composition method. I'm saying I've got some operation, and what I want to do is I want to wrap stuff around it, and the stuff that I want to wrap around it, I want to be um, selective and dynamic. Cool. What just happened? Sorry. Calm, calm down your robot. That was an echo, man. <laughs> Annoying. <laughs> <laughs> pool. Not Paul. Pool. <laughs> well, she's got an American accent, so what can I say? <laughs> All kinds of broken. Uh, so, yeah. So, what I did was I essentially applied the same logic that Christo has, has effectively applied here. But instead of having the object with lots of sort of constructor parameters. I said, hey, you declare the the object with the operation, and then you can call these extension methods. So you get this kind of fluent API into building out, if you like, the service is wrapped around it. Um, now, you know, there might be some differences we want to make to the way that I've kind of implemented these things, but this was just another way of looking at the same concept, basically. Yeah, yeah. 
So, so two things I, I'm just thinking about in here. Number one is that I don't want to introduce a new model in here. Mm. But if we have to, we have to. That's why that, I was saying. Make weirdly, it... that, that was the thing I said to Christo in the week. I said, well, I think I proposed something similar down these lines mm. to you before. And the, the problem here is that you start causing that, in, that entanglement problem. Right? Yep. So initially, my thoughts were, you've got that try-catch method. And in your try and in your catch, you've got opportunity to chain further calls that could be part of the same service. So my thinking was, you just do that. Now, it did raise a question for me that, for example, is try catch the same try catch that you would want to reuse across the entire service if you started adding all of these services? And if you did, so for example, um, ah. mm. when you do an add, the rollback operation for that is, is this, a delete. Yeah. But when you do an update, the rollback is another update, essentially. But, but see, that's the thing. That's okay because you parameterized. You parameterize yeah. the retry. Yeah. So it's still the try catch. The same try catch with a different reference or a different funk that does the retry. Yeah, potentially. Um, but my thinking is like if a given exception is thrown. Does it matter what the operation is, or is it always a case of if that exception is thrown, I want to roll back or I want to do something? But, well, well, here's the thing. Just think about this when you're, when you're. Again, this is not an easy problem to solve. I was just talking to Christo about this yesterday. I think we were talking offline, and I said, "This is this is a tough problem that we're trying to solve." But um, think about leaving it as lenient and as modular as possible because there are scenarios that not not even you not i not christo not all of us combined can think of and i right. think that was where me and christo went with it because we were saying hey by declaring this new object here you had this other thing and depending on how you configured that thing so which you could do at the operation level so you you didn't have something that was defined as part of the service. So it was it was applicable across the whole service because whenever or wherever it was called, yeah. it was always the same method, right? So the logic was very strict. What it did for one operation, it would always do for another operation. Right. Unless, like you say, you start introducing parameters which allow the code to branch. But then that adds complexity, which we don't want really, do we? So my thinking was that and I think Christo went down the same lines. It was like, okay, by having this object be responsible for it, the object could then be um, constructed differently to allow for different, if you like, scenarios or different usages of certain services. So retries, rollbacks, exception handling. But you can see here, uh, I think part of where you were going was lines 20, 21, 22. Yeah. So all I did was I passed in a reference to the handling methods instead of passing in a lambda i defined a method that would handle that particular type of exception and i just passed it in but 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 paul that means if you have 20 exceptions then you've got 20 um, different exception handling methods but you've already got that in all your try catches anyway yeah that's hidden behind the scene away from your core business logic that's the thing that's yeah. what we're trying to do like it, it's like you have a book and this book has a chapter in it that talks specifically about exceptions, but you don't have that on top of your book. You don't have that in the title. Sure. I mean, you could you could just put like with exception handler, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you could put exception in there, and then you could say handle exception, and then in there there could be a switch case, and in that switch block you could pick one of these methods instead. So that might be another route because then you you're saying, hey, this is how I want to handle exceptions the specifics of which are over here somewhere and it becomes a one-liner in this context so you could just have with exception handler drop the generic and then just have an, a handle exception method in your service does yeah. that make sense yeah yeah and this can um, be execute async as well that would be okay retry retry is going to be conditional like uh like christo's idea he basically is saying well retry on what specifically right i don't want to retry on service exception for instance i don't want to retry on sql exception because it's literally saying the database is down so i retry at this point but 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 that's that's just the you know just that's just the finalization of 
of this problem, the product, the productionization of this problem. What I really care about is just how this looks. There's, mm -hmm. there's, there's three things that is going against us here, right? The, it just doesn't feel right that we have a function. This is the same problem in my own proposal as well. And there's a bunch of things coming out after that function is already wrapping up. That's the one thing now that's that we're kind of struggling with, right? Um, I think it's just too noisy, right? There's too much going on. And one other approach that I kind of had was to apply, where was it? Here we go. So this, this was um, effectively what we would do is write um, an exposure component around that object right. um, in the form of an attribute. Um, so then what you'd end up with is this. Where are you? Example. <laughs> Back in Discord. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what, I mean, this... I, I feel like in the standard, there's a lot of like the C sharp language that we don't take advantage of, but I got a funny feeling that that's somewhat deliberate. Um, and I'm thinking that I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I intentionally think some of the features that we have in C sharp are dumb. Yeah. Right. Just like Java. Why, why are we using XOR? What, what's, what's that XOR for? Who's using <laughs> XOR? Do you know anyone that uses XOR? That's like stupidity squared. Anyway, tell me. <laughs> so my, my thinking here was using something like call interception um, in the implementation of the library that would hold service operation here. In this case, um, we could effectively apply the same wrapper logic around that method. But instead of it all being in line, now you can see the method is just the business logic. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing else in the method itself just above the method we've marked it to say hey these are the things that are going to happen around this and again the exception handling as we just talked about you could just have a single exception handler to point at a single method but also this operation is actually defining in the event that something goes wrong and i need to do a rollback i'm defining what the rollback operation is and i'm letting something else deal with the concept of a unit of work so i'm not pulling it right in here into my operation um, but also things like retries and stuff like that. To my mind, these all are uh, sort of considered to be like services to the code. They're, they're kind of things that you want to happen all over the place, but you don't want them happening in the way of your code, if that makes sense. You want to focus mm -hmm. on the actual business operation that you're writing now, not all of the other fluff around it. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So again, this is just the same block of code. Um, and you can see here, I even consume a unit unit of work broker on line 18. Yeah. Um, and essentially, like, I could take that line out because I've got it in the attribute. So I don't know. I don't know if I could, though, if you think, because I'm thinking about, like, context here. Like, what's happening? When's it happening? How is it happening? And how do we track what's happening? Because tracking is quite important. Right. I, I'll tell you what this looks like in my mind. There. <clears throat> so, so sometime maybe early two thousands, when when Apple Macintosh they built the Lisa computer. Do you guys remember the Lisa, Apple Macintosh? Do you remember that? Well, not the Lisa. It was. Um, no, it wasn't that one. It was a. There is a there is a the original Apple One. No, do you remember the one that had the colorful, the very colorful background? I oh, forgot yeah. what it was called. The first iMac, first iMac. Yeah, the iMac. Yeah. There it is, the first iMac. Okay. So let me just tell you something about this. When they created this, Johnny Ive, uh, at at a time, he's not at Apple anymore. You know, he just left. You know, just a couple of years after uh, Jobs died, and one of the things that that were happening at a time is that originally this computer didn't had the speakers outside 
So the speakers were outside of this piece. And then Steve Jobs came and he was like, why don't you put the speakers inside? Because the user now doesn't have to worry too much about finding the cords and hooking up the cords. It feels more natural and more easy. One piece, one component, put it, plug it, run, plug and play, right? That's why he was great because he's always thinking about this experience. For some reason, and I know you might not actually make the connection, for some odd reason, when I see this, I see I see the speakers connected to the actual computer. So this is the computer, and these are speakers connected to it. And I feel like it's detached from the actual function. I feel like, what do you call it? Uh, homogeny? Homogeneousness of the function? Um, so it, are you saying that all of these things that would be covered by that have to happen inside the actual method code or or baked into the function somehow the way we baked in try catch like it, it needs to be mm. baked in as one unit because remember if i go tell people hey this is the new standard there are languages out there that don't support that that decoration and this is why my initial thought was inside try catch in those catch blocks that you've got. So firstly, I would take the try catch method itself down to a single catch block that catch catches any exception. Mm -hmm. And then I would call another method from there, which translates it into a switch statement because switch statements are to my mind, much cleaner to read then each of those cases from the switch statement should go to a dedicated method that handles that particular type of exception. Right. Um, and then from there, you can apply whatever business logic that you want to apply. So by method chaining like this, everything is kept nice and simple in the scope that it's needed to be in, if that makes sense. Right. So if there's particular exceptions where you want to do particular things, the handler for that specific type of exception is the place to do those things rather than worrying about it here at the operation level does that make sense yeah yeah and it saves the need for declaring new objects it saves the need for defining parameters for things you've already got your object in context as well so things like um you know if you've got a problem with um something downstream um, then you you might need access to the piece of data that was passed in originally and yeah. what the downstream thing state is in order to do some future bit of code, which might then involve just calling another method in the current service. I don't know what that might do, though. But, you know, I found scenarios where, like, an update fails and I want the current version of it and I want the previous version of it, if you see what I mean, so I can mm. make a decision on what I'm going to do next. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. Okay, listen, uh, I mean, if you're writing a, just a natural sentence, right, you're going to have to reference the things that you are, the referencing happens after you make the call. Like you can't say with retry, with security, add the student. It's just, it sounds weird. You have to go and say, add the student with retry and with security, right? Um, Securely to, add the student. Yeah. <laughs> Securely add a student. Securely add a valid student and retry if failed. So your, your retry statement came after. Yeah. There you so go. So you attempt the operation. And what you're saying is you want to attempt the operation. And if it fails, attempt it again. But the operation is defined as securely adding a valid student. Right. So you can say securely add a valid student and read. So that tells me fails. run my security check, run my validation check, add the student. And if any of that process yeah, breaks down for certain reasons, retry. Well <laughs> well well that breaks the decoration idea then because you're you're putting the retry at the top before you actually declare the function itself. Yes, the, sol the solution could be a little bit of both, by the way, it doesn't have to be. But just remember 
as I'm building this standard universal project, and I'm going to pull some of you in it, whether you like it or not, I will volunteer you. <laughs> you will be voluntold to kind of join in that project. But at some point in time, like right now, I'm just laying the foundation, broker service and a test. But I'm going to go and say, hey, how do we do the try catch over there? Right. In Rust or something like that. Right. I have to say, though, like working with different languages kind of increases my appreciation to C sharp. We're actually actually really spoiled. Like some of these languages are like you don't have support. You don't have ecosystem. Deal with it. Go figure it out. Right. And some others have pretty cool features like to do in in in, in Kotlin and stuff like that. So anyway, we're at time. I have to kind of, you know, step up a bit, but uh, I think we're getting super close. It's just about whether we whether we can just digest the idea of extending multiple references. And and there's only a handful of them. Security, retry, you know, we could we could add some in front of some of them. Uh, sorry, inside some of them. It's all possible. Um let's reconvene again next week and see what we have. Okay, there is not there isn't really an assignment, you know, it's just some ideas um the only challenge we have is that it needs it needs to look simple you know somehow um i'll even do my own due diligence with the with the parameters and see if that works out but uh, i appreciate your your time and effort into this this is definitely a, a very interesting problem to solve and we need to solve for it as soon as fast as possible because you know people are yelling at me you know on on the standard repo they're saying where is your tracing dude you're telling people go build an enterprise level system, but uh, I don't know what's going on in my system, right? The the part that they don't know is that Azure automatically kind of keeps track of some of these if you play App Insights properly, but you don't have much control about what's actually being logged. So it's giving you this free out of the box, low code, no code thing. But I can also go and say, well, the standard tells you to use Azure. You can't go say that when you're saying cloud foreign. It just doesn't mm. doesn't quite add up. Anyway, I, I don't like application insights. I just, my experience of it is I get billed as much for what application insights logs as what I do for hosting my infrastructure. And I've never understood why. And I've weirdly, I've just I've questioned Microsoft's billing on it in, in Azure. And the only answer I got back was, I don't know, we're looking into it. And I'm like, well, it can't cost as much to log stuff as it does to run an entire business, right? You, so what's going on? You're just doing it wrong. I have to go. Take care. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Take care.